Hashimoto's. Well, you may never have heard of this disease with the funny name, but it currently affects more than 35 million Americans, and that includes one in five women. Take a look. Dr. Isabella Wentz was 27 when she was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, a thyroid disorder. Dr. Wentz is a pharmacist and made it her life's mission to find out how to stop the attacks on her body. Eight years later, Dr. Wentz has become one of the pioneering experts in addressing the causes of autoimmune thyroid disease. I found that simple lifestyle changes, and diet in particular, can hold the key to rebalance the autoimmune process, helping you get to the root cause of your condition. In her book, Hashimoto's Protocol, Dr. Wentz shares what she did to heal from her condition and believes we can reverse our symptoms in 90 days. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Isabella Wentz. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a blessing. First of all, tell us what this is and where the crazy name came from. <laughs> so Hashimoto sounds like a rare and exotic condition or perhaps a Japanese sword fighter. Where it's <laughs> actually a very common condition affecting 28% of the population in the United States. And wow. it was first discovered about 100 years ago and it was named after a Japanese physician who discovered it. So with those numbers, why don't we hear more about it? Testing. So doctors are not doing the right kind of tests. People are told that they're crazy, fat, or lazy when they're actually struggling with their thyroid. There are so many autoimmune diseases today. How did you know when you began to have, you were only 27 years old when you were diagnosed, but how did you know this was what you had? Testing, so the best thing you can do is to get tested for the condition and there are specific markers in the blood that can be found wow. that recognize whether your body has started to attack the, th the thyroid gland and treat it as a foreign invader. And so that's exactly what's really happening is your own immune system begins to attack the thyroid. And what things were, were present in your life that were causing that to happen? For me, one of the biggest symptoms was fatigue. So I was sleeping for 12 hours a night to, wow. uh, to feel and still rested. feeling tired? Or? Still feeling tired, having a hard time getting out of bed. I was losing hair. I was having panic attacks. My mood was off. Uh, my, my menstrual cycles was off. I had carpal tunnel in both arms. Good grief. People will report cold intolerance. They'll gain weight. A lot of times, unfortunately, women are misdiagnosed with fertility issues, with depression and all mm -hmm. sorts of symptoms, and they're told that it's all in their head or, or that they're yeah. just getting older, when in fact they actually have a thyroid condition. So if the numbers are what they are, Isabella, why, it, it seemed like as I was reading your book, like you sort of had to take the bull by the horns and define this for yourself and then sort of uh, decide that this was what it was and then we'll get to treatment in a minute, but I mean, why isn't it more often what's diagnosed for people? So there's this diagnostic test that's a wonderful test known as the TSH test. It's thyroid stimulating hormone. And if you go to your conventional doctor or any kind of doctor and say, hey doc, I think my thyroid might be off, that's what they'll test. Unfortunately, this number isn't always indicative for at least 10 to 15 years after we've had this condition. So we can have this autoimmune process where our body is attacking our thyroid gland and we're having all these various symptoms. Mm -hmm. We can have mood swings, we can have panic attacks, weight gain, fatigue, but yet the TSH number will still be normal for 10, 15, sometimes 20 years. And so doctors are not utilizing two very simple tests and they're known as thyroid antibody tests, TPO and TG antibodies. These are going to be elevated for, for many, many years and can uncover thyroid disease in the early stages so that we can wow. prevent potentially a lifetime of all these symptoms and medications and hospitalizations even. So here you are, you're 27 years old, you get diagnosed with this and you're a pharmacist. So one would think the natural thing would be that you would take some sort of medication for this, but you decided to take a different route. What happened? I was so excited when I was diagnosed, right? Part of me was like, finally, I have an answer. Yeah, a name. <laughs> a name. This is what I've been struggling with for the last 10 years. And as a pharmacist, I was excited to start the medications. But the medications didn't help that much. So I went from sleeping for 12 hours to 11 hours a night. And the medications wow. also didn't address the underlying root cause and all the different imbalances that led my body to attack the thyroid gland in the first place. So I wanted to figure out if there was anything that I can do yeah. to make myself feel better 
and potentially reverse the condition. And that's sort of how I became um, <laughs> a human guinea pig slash Hashimoto's expert. Your own guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> One of the great things about all the work that you've done in your book, Hashimoto's Protocol, is that you, you are just at heart a researcher. You like mm -hmm. to know and understand and dig for all of these things for the rest of us. You know, <laughs> we like to know someone like you who tells us. But, but what did you d decide about treatment of this and things that could be done to treat the symptoms? I realized after working on my own health and working with uh, numerous people with the condition that there were very fundamental things that every single person can do to take back their health and really focusing on our own body's healing capabilities. And so supporting our body in the healing journey and addressing some of the imbalances, for example, helping the body with detoxification, helping mm -hmm. our stress response, as well as helping the function of our digestive system. And a lot of these interventions are are focused in nutrition, mm -hmm. not necessarily in medications, right? It comes back to food and what we put in our bodies, doesn't it? Food is medicine, or I like to call it food pharmacology, yeah. right? You, you mentioned digestive system, and there, there is one thing that almost everyone who deals with these issues, a common thread that, that runs. What is it? So every single case of autoimmune disease and every case of thyroid disease, I would say 99% of the time, is going to be to to autoimmunity. And now there's an underlying factor with autoimmune disease. This is going to be having the right genetic predisposition, having a trigger that turns on the genes, as well as intestinal permeability or an impaired digestive system. So every case of thyroid disease actually has this intestinal digestive component that we really need to address in order to feel our best. And so that, that, what does that mean, digestive component? What do you mean when you say that? A lot of times what we'll see is people with thyroid disease, they will have either constipation or diarrhea, acid reflux. They're not properly absorbing nutrients mm -hmm. from their foods, and this means they become nutrient deficient and they're not able to produce thyroid hormones. Mm -hmm. They may pick up um, various infections or they may get food sensitivities from the foods that they're eating because they're not properly digesting. So what did you change in your diet? So I did quite a few different things, and these are actually things that have been found um, in, in my research to support almost 90% of people with thyroid disease. The number one thing was getting off of gluten. Mm -hmm. That 88% of people feel significantly better, even when they don't have celiac disease. But because thyroid disease makes it very difficult to digest numerous things, we'll find that people will feel significantly better off of this food. Getting off of dairy, 80% mm -hmm. of people feel better off of dairy, getting off of soy, which can be inflammatory for the thyroid gland, as well as processed food and processed wow. sugars. So much misdiagnosing of people who are struggling with autoimmune issues and specifically with Hashimoto's. If you think that you might have some of the symptoms that Isabel has been talking about, she's got some wonderful answers for you. Her book is called Hashimoto's Protocol and it's available wherever books are sold. And we have a web exclusive interview with Isabella on our Facebook page. If you'd like to watch that, go to facebook.com slash 700 club. Wonderful to have you with us. What a great work you've done. I mean, she's done the homework for y'all. So <laughs> enjoy the book. Thank you. Great to have you here, Isabella. Thank you so much for having me.